Hi and welcome. Um, yeah, as promised, I made a video and a tutorial on those little piggies. So I'm going to show you how to make them. Now with those, I added a key ring, um, but that's completely optional. If you don't want to add a key ring, just leave it out. And of course you can make different color variations as well, or um, um, bigger or smaller too. So that is entirely up to yourself how you want to um, create those piggies. But I'm gonna show you now in the finer detail how I made them. And they're actually fairly easy to make. So my name is Francisca and I live here in the west of Ireland. I'm a, a felt textile artist and I love to create loads of different things. Those pigs actually were not something I uh, anticipated to do, but they turned out really, really nice. It was a commission I did for someone that um, wanted a, a little piggy. So in the end, it was a lot more than just a one. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm very super happy how they turned out and I am delighted to be able to show you now how exactly I make them. So let's start. So the first thing we're going to need is two balls and I'm going to start this here, the inside with um, cheaper wool. As you can see, there is um, there's sometimes a bit of grass left in it, some seeds left in it. So this wouldn't be um, an expensive wool. So it's good for something that's inside a ball, uh, for instance, that we were not going to see the wool. So I'm starting with wrapping this up. And as I wrap this, I squeeze the thumb and the finger together to get rid of the air that's in the wool. So I can make this really nice and tight. And I'm just wrapping this up. And obviously, the bigger you want to make those picks, the more wool you're going to need and the bigger you're going to roll up this little bundle here. But I'm going to give you a measurement now. What I am doing here and then you can adjust it to yourself for your liking what you want to do. So this is going to be the belly of the pig. And at the moment, I have this at about 14 centimeters, five and a half inch, just around there. So this is my base. And then I'm going to use this pinky color here. That's the, going to be the color of this little piggy. Now, this is not merino wool. This is a um, mountain sheep wool. And it's a, again, it's a bat. As you can see, the wool is not running in one direction. It's running um, everywhere. It's not like the roving. It's just in one direction and the bats are mixed. So it's... A little bit, I find it's easier to felt with because you don't have to lay it out, out in a certain way. So I'm going to wrap this now as well with the color that I want the pig to be. Just all over. and covering all the whites. So this is now try to get the middle so this is now nearly 19, 18 centimeters, 19, 19 centimeters. 
So I'm happy with the size of that. So I have a, and then I have a middle sized um, felting needle here and I am just pricking this a little bit so it won't open up once it goes in the water. And to speed things up, I usually take two into my hand. It's just to stabilize this <clears throat> because there's still a lot of air in here. Once this goes into the water, it's more likely to unravel if I don't do this because the air that's inside the wool is trying to get out. So I might just unravel. So I just pin this down a bit. So some parts of this pig are um, needle felted and some parts are wet felted. So it's a combination of the two. So that's all I need this so far. So then I have here a laundry bag or a bag that you can wash bras in. You can take a cushion cover as well. Just something that contains the wool in the washing machine to the one, well, not the one spot, but it's not going around the washing machine freely. Um, I prefer to put them into a little bag. But with this bag, we have to have a few tennis balls put into it as well, or anything round that will bounce this ball around a little bit. So I have a couple of balls here and I'm just going to put them in here as well. And this and zip it up. Now that's the body done of the pig, but I am going to need a head as well. So the body is, as I said, 19 centimeters. Um, the head has to be smaller. So again, I'm going to start with the white wool inside. Now I'm going to leave it at that. And this is 11. Now I'm going to make, I'm going to put on some more because the body is quite big. I know it will shrink, but it's not going to shrink that much. So as I said, this wool here is not a merino wool. This white one here is a um, very cheap wool, as you can see, it's little seeds, but they're not gonna do any harm. The wool itself is clean. So it can be a little bit rougher material than your fine merino wool because you're gonna save on materials. Then the next layer again, um, the same color as the belly. This is going to be for the head. So what measurement have I here now? It's a 13. Okay, so I have this beautiful wool here again. It's from a mountain sheep, Bergschaf, and it's probably maybe 23 micron. It's soft, but it's not as soft as the merino wool. So again, I'm going to wrap this all up. But I want to make sure it's not going to be as big as the belly. I don't want it as big as the belly. I want this smaller. So what have we here? 16. Yeah, definitely going to leave it at that. So again, I pinch it to make sure it's stabilized and it's not going to open up. When you do this, be careful. Those needles are extremely sharp. They're actually, and 
they're medium sized needles here what I'm using. You can get um middle fine and um what's the word not hard middle fine and um rough or just bigger basically thicker not bigger thicker so there's a fine medium and thick one and those that needle felt a lot more than i do probably have more felting needles available i don't needle felt that often so that's just stabilized as well and i'm gonna put this into the bag now why am i actually putting this into a bag because i am going to load this into the washing machine and i'm going to wash it as it is I don't add any soap or anything and I wash it for about half an hour at about 30 to 40 degrees and a bit nicely felted by the time they come back out again. You can, of course, do this as well by hand. Um, let's take one out. So if you're doing it by hand, you want to put this into warm water. Add a little bit of soap to it. And then just keep rolling this. Keep rolling this for about 10 minutes. Squeeze it every now and again and keep rolling. And that will felt it as well with soap and warm water. But I cheat a little bit. It's just saving time to put this into the washing machine. If you're doing this in the washing machine, the newer machines, are they, they wash slightly different to an older one. As I just noticed when i changed my washing machine after 16 years um previously i was able to put them into the washing machine dry like this and i had no problem but with the newer washing machines now i have to wet them before i put them in so if you have a newer washing machine wet them just put them into a bowl with water till they're a bit bit wet and soaking and then put them back into the bag and put on your cycle and i'm going to show you what comes out when i'm finished with this i want to show you the next step so i need thread really strong thread cut it and i want to make a good knot into it Then a long needle is handy, so I can go right through it. And a few pins. Now, after a while, you might need the pins if you make a lot of them. But for the start, I'm going to set pins so that I am with the leg, not one leg up here or down here, so that they're kind of level and also here that they're in the middle of the ball you know that you're not over here or over here so i want it in the middle of the ball the same over here and then here again as well in the middle a pin and the same here so that they're all in around the same line all around so four pins so then i start with my thread in here and over to this side and just try to be as accurate to the pin as you can and in and straight away back in where we started off so we basically make a circle i 
and again i make sure that this is kind of halfway in the middle here with the thread as well and the same over here so when you start pulling it you can actually see you know not that the thread is going over here or over here so it's fairly in the middle and then i go here i lost my thread <laughs> as it happens here in the middle so not up here or over here in the middle here and i'm trying not to hit the thread over to this pin And now the same thing on this side here and out. So I'm basically repeating what I did with the first stitch. I do the same with this stitch. It's like a loop. And again, when I pull, I can fairly see how this is going to look and if you're not happy just open it up again but that's the legs done so you see one two three four legs so to secure this i might just go through it again so now if you ever cannot pull on the thread then you stitched into the thread. So I want this really tight. So what's important that you have really strong thread and I use this Guterman here. Um, it's 100% polyester. So this is really strong thread and you can get this in different colors as well. So I'm just going to make a few more stitches because I really want to avoid um, this thread becoming loose. really tight so it's not that easy to get out so happy with that and I'm going to cut it off because sometimes I have enough thread I can go straight to the head to attach the head but I don't think I have with this one so I'm gonna cut it off and I start a new thread Okay, so now I can attach the head to the piggy. This part here, you see I have the legs done. So again, I have a strong thread. Putting that onto a long needle, it's a little bit easier. It's a long needle and I have a knot at the other end. And I'm just going through here through the middle so the not will be invisible and I go up to where I want the head. Hopla. So obviously I need a thicker knot so it won't rip through. Now that should do. And out. And here I go straight through it again. This is 
very dense here. I actually wet felted the head a little bit more. I wanted the head a little bit smaller, so I just with my hand I made it wet and I squeezed it a few times. So that's why this got very dense inside and much harder to stitch through it. Um, I just felt the head was a tiny bit too big. So just made it a little bit smaller. So if you cannot put the needle through, use pliers, then you'll get it done. And out here again. The head is there and I just go through this one more time to really make this secure. And I want the needle to come out the same spot again more or less. Now that's fine. And now I, I'm going up here with the thread because I have enough here that will allow me to attach the tail. And I'm going to show you now how I make the tail. I am crocheting the tail and then I stitch it on. Okay. Um, right. I have my yarn here for the um, to crochet the tail here of the pig. So I wouldn't use a yarn that's very thick, It'd be light enough. So I'm going through my fingers like this. And if you're not too familiar with crochet, there's loads of tutorials on YouTube. And then I have my crochet hook. And I'm going to make about 15 to 20 chain stitches here so one two three four five six seven eight nine nine so it really depends how long you want to make that tail and then i'm just going to make a slip stitch back again because I don't want this tail to become too thick so it's just into the chain getting the thread and pulling all through and work your way back like that Of course, you can make that little tail any way you want as well. You might want to felt the tail or use a piece of leather or whatever else you want to do. I just show you how I did it and I crocheted the tail. And the reason why is because um, it twirls it nicely when I'm finished. You know, the way the pig have a little curly tail. So I can do this with this crochet pattern. So this is 15 stitches here, chain stitches. Um, I'm happy with that. I could have made it a little bit longer, but I think it's okay. So I'm just opening this. 
pull this out and then knot these two together and that's it and there's my tail for piggy make another one just be on the safe side now I can cut this off and I need another needle now so just got a smaller needle get the thread through it and then I can stitch on the tail onto the pig Now that should hold. Now get this little tail to twirl and it will. There you go. Yeah, I should probably have made it a little bit longer, but anyway, you get the idea. So next up is um, the snout of the pig. So for the snout again, I need a bit of wool and this time I need a felting needle. So I am rolling up a little bit of wool. And again, I squeeze it with my finger and thumb. And then I felt this with the needle. So the nose, you can make the nose as big as you want. I am just cutting this down. It's too big there. So if you make more than one pig, put them away. You can make more noses with those. All I want is this here. So nice and round. And this is now going on to the pig. But as you can see, it's still a bit long, so I'm gonna cut this even more. Now it's ready to attach here. And I'm going all around the nose and I'm pushing the wool into the head with the needle. This takes a bit of time because we don't want the pig to lose her nose. And be very careful that you don't hit your fingers. So the little barbed wires here on the felting needle will push the fibers up and down through each other and make it felt in a different way than when you use warm water and soap.
So there you go. If you want to be super sure that the nose won't come off, you can take a bit of wool, just like that, and drape it over the nose like this. And then, as well as that, attach that on to the face of the pig if you want. So this will definitely prevent the nose from coming loose. But also this part here, because it's stitched on, will help to keep all this in place. There is your nose attached. So just do this as good as you can, that it's a nice and smooth surface. And then we make the ears. So again, for this, I need wool. And I want to have this a bit thicker so the ears are nice and strong. And I'm actually going to add a small bit of white onto that. And again, I am pinching all down. Now, if you make more than one pig, you can make this a bigger size um, this is actual plenty here for nearly three pigs so I'm just going to concentrate on this corner here because I don't need that much now so cutting this off to make it a bit smaller This tool is really handy for this now that you can do a larger area fairly fast. And I have felt mats here, but you can use carton boxes as well. Just something that the needles can go through that it, they don't hit a table because they break very quickly. Once they hit a hard service, they break. So with that done, I'm going to cut out two ears. One and two. So that's what I want, two triangles. And then I define them a little bit more with the felting needle again. So they become a good, strong felt. And now they go on to the pig's head. And I just put them down onto the head like that. So if you want, you can secure it with a pin so it won't become loose. Um, well, I can't find my pins right now, so I'm just going to hold it. And I'm just pushing this down. Then I can bend this over here, the ears, and push it down this way as well. Really making sure that the head and the ear is connecting together. The 
sides here as well. And always be mindful that you mind those fingers because those felting needles are so sharp. There you go, there's one ear done. So the second one, where did it go? Put that down. Again, I bend it over. And there's your two ears. Now, if you find they're too big, you can cut them down with the scissor but I am happy enough with those now and they're well put into the head there so they won't be coming loose. So next up is um, this part here and I make this actually out of Fimo and I'm stitching it onto the nose. So what is Fimo? So this part here is made with Fimo and this is Fimo. This is basically polymer clay. You can buy this in different colors, loads of different colors. But for the picks now, I'm going to use this pinky color. And you don't need an awful lot. And when you break it up first, it's a bit crumbly. So what you need to do, you need to hold it in a warm hand works best and it gets soft so you just knead it till it gets softer in your hands Now I'm getting there. I have a little bit too much, so I'm just gonna get, take half of it. Still too much. So then I make a round ball. Once it's nice and soft, press it down so it gets flat. And then I make two holes. You can use toothpicks for that as well. It works really well. And then I make the holes big enough so the needle will go through it. And as well from the other side. So you can check if it's about the right size that you want. And then bake this 130 degrees, not hotter than that, for half an hour. And be careful when they come out, they're hot and they still feel a little bit soft. But once they cool down, they become really hard. See, this is one that I made earlier. So they become really hard. And this is the one I'm going to stitch on now onto the pig. So I need thread. Thread. 
and for this now I may need two separate needles a one a long one to start off with and then change into a shorter one and again I'm going to make a knot and I'm going in here between the gap here so the knot can disappear and I'm going all the way up to the snout. on back down and back down and I'm going all the way back down again and this really helps as well to keep the nose in place And with this straight back up and I'm going to attach the eyes. I want to come out a little bit higher than that. Now. And I don't think I'll get through the uh, through the bead with this thick needle. So I need to get this thinner needle. And I am using I am using three millimeter beads. That's for the eyes. Yeah, won't get through that one, so I need a tinder needle again. And over here then to attach the eye. So then I just go over and back a few times to secure this thread and Piggy has got his eyes and his nose. So we're nearly there. Um, I'm going to make the mouth as well. See, this one is a little V mount. So I'm just using a bit of an embroidery thread here. You might have different thread. I'm just going to use two of them. Now 
now. And again, I make a bit of a knot here. And then I just attach. I start here at the back of the ears and I can pull in the knot so it's invisible. And I go down here to create my V. I want it a bit lower than that. If I can manage. And I just make a V. I stitch a V so I go up here and up here. And if you want, you can repeat the, repeat the stitch or you can leave it. That's up to you. There you go. And then I just go back up to the ears. And go over and back behind the ears a few times so it won't come loose. And cut it off. Okay, so we're nearly there. We're nearly finished with the pigs. Um, the last part here is the scarf. And I made this with a bit of cotton um, yarn. And I crocheted the scarf. It's just because I wanted to put on a key ring. And I thought if I make the scarf out of wool, um, or felt it's not as strong as if I would do this with with a cotton um, string. So I crocheted, made the scarf out of crochet. Um, I'm going to show you how. So if you want to do the same thing, um, but if you want to do with something else, that's obviously up to you. Um, the same with the keyring, if you want to put one on or not. And then I just wrap it around and I give it a few stitches. And that's that done. And the pig is finished. But um, yeah, so first up, I show you how I make the scarf. So, throw my fingers. And a chain loop. So I can make my chain stitches and I need as many as long as I want the scarf to be. So yeah, I'm happy with this length. So I'm leaving it at this. And now all I'm going to do, I'm going backwards in the scarf and I'm going to do This stitch here, I'm going to Google it and I'll let you know what stitch it is, but I don't know the English name for it. So basically I'm grabbing the thread, the, I'm grabbing the yarn there and I'm going into the first um, chain. I grab it and I go through two and then one and again. Grab it through two and then to the la last, last two. Again, I grab it into the chain, pull through the first two and then to the last two. So this is giving me a nice wide scarf. So I just keep continue with this till I have them chain chains all done. So the last two I think no 
and that's my scarf done. So all I do, I pull this out and that is secure. And I'm just going to tie it together. Cut this off. And I want the same on this side. I want to have at least two. And of course, feel free if you want to add more. I am just going here through with the crochet hook. Grab a bit of yarn. Pull it through. Open. Open this. Open the latch and pull that through. Now. So I'm going to add another one here, just to even it out. This is my scarf. So the scarf is finished and I just need to attach this here around the neck. I have a key ring that I will add on as well. And then I have here the same yarn because I want this really strong if I put on a key ring that this will really hold. So I'm starting here at one end. And because it's the same color and the same yarn, it's um it's a very good camouflage. It's you know, you're not going to see the stitches. So I'm just grabbing a bit of wool and a bit of the scarf and I go around. Then I add my keyring. And I just continue. And I overlap it there on the top with the scarf. And I go around again one more time with the thread. And that's that done and we're finished. Little piggy is ready to give to someone and you can add your keys and everything else.
Well, <clears throat> this is the end of the pick little mini course. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you will try as well to make a few little piggies. They're nice little presents to give to people. So if you made one or two or as many as you made, um, please send me a few pictures if you want. I'd love to see them and with your consent I will um, show them on my next newsletter or you know, not probably not the next newsletter, but I'm going to show it to you on a newsletter. What some what other people have done. Um, I'd love to see a load of herd of piggies out there. I actually don't <laughs> don't know what is a herd of pigs called. Probably is a name for it. Um. So thanks for watching. It was thoroughly enjoyable doing this little course for you, and I hope you like it too. So see you another time, and thanks. Bye.